Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build a box that will control an LED light bar, or any 12 volt light for that matter, to blink to a certain pattern. So recently a friend asked me if I could build him a controller that he would hook up to his LED light bar on the top of his truck, and it would blink to a certain pattern based on what he wanted. Now, I figured out what kind of circuit I needed to build this uh, blinking light contraption. I'm going to be using an ATtiny85 circuit. Now, an ATtiny is kind of like a miniature Arduino, except that it's not as powerful and doesn't have as many pins. Now, some of you may be asking, why can't I use just a 555 timer circuit to turn this light bar or any 12 volt device on and off? Well, the reason behind that is because he wants this LED light bar to turn on and blink at different patterns, and you can't have different patterns programmed into a 555 timer circuit or an oscillator circuit. So we need to use uh, an AT Tiny to blink that LED to the different patterns he wants, which will make it work and look very cool. Now this circuit can turn on LED light bars. It can blink any kind of 12 volt light. So let's get started with the circuit. Now before we actually start building our circuit, we need to draw the blueprint for it. The blueprint is the, the diagram that shows all the designs of... Now before we actually start building our circuit, we need to draw it out first, because this helps us know how everything is going to go together. So let's work from the back. So what we want is we want a 12 volt in and a ground, and then a 12 volt out and then a ground. And this out should theoretically be able to control a light bulb, an incandescent or LED light bulb. Now, this means that we need current to flow from the output into the ground, which means we have to control it right here. Now, because this LED light bar or any kind of thing on the output will draw quite a few amps, we need to have a MOSFET transistor that drives it. Now, the schematic diagram of a MOSFET looks something like this, with this being the gate, this being the drain, and this being the source, and this being the drain. So the drain would connect directly to the out, and the source would connect directly to the 12 volts in. So if we apply a voltage here, it allows current to flow through this path, through the circuit, and to ground. Now we need to control this. Now we could always just control this with the AT Tiny, with its output, but that wouldn't be very good, because this little AT Tiny cannot supply a very high current. And when you initially drive the gate of a MOSFET, it requires very high currents. So we're going to need to use a buffer transistor. Now what we'll do is we'll take a resistor and have a resistor go to the gate of the MOSFET. This means it will always be on. Now what we do is we have an NPN transistor. In our case, it's going to be a 2N3904 with a little arrow on it, and that will go to ground. So that way, when we apply a small voltage and a small current to this little transistor, it'll turn off the gate of this MOSFET, making all the signals that you put into this kind of inverted. So if I put a voltage on here, it'll turn on the MOSFET. If I take off the voltage, the MOSFET will turn off. Now, this will be connected to one of the pins of the ATtiny microcontroller, and we're going to have it connected to pin 3. Now, there's 8 pins on this, and... Pin 3 of the microcontroller, like an Arduino, is actually pin 2. So we'll connect pin 2 up to that NPN transistor. Now we also have VCC and ground to take care of. Now if we look at this ATtiny, we see a little dot on the side. And that labels where the pins count from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Pin 8 is VCC, which means it needs 5 volts. And pin 4 is ground, which means it's grounded like everything else. Now, what we're going to do is we need to make a 5 volt um, way for this circuit to get power. Now, if we tried to hook up the AT Tiny to 12 volts, it would fry. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a voltage regulator. In my case, an LM7805. Now, this has three pins. So, this is in, and in is going to go up to 12 volts. Ground is obviously going to go to ground, and out is going to go over here across these little wires and to power the AT Tiny. Now, we're also going to need to add some capacitance to this um, thing because we want to filter out any voltage ripples. And so we'll add a big electrolytic capacitor on the output right here, wrong way. And we'll add a small ceramic capacitor to the input. 
Sorry for my uh, bad circuit diagram. So this is kind of our circuit. It's not very good, but it'll work. Let's start building this thing. Okay, so I just realized a slight mistake I made with my circuit diagram, where I put this MOSFET with the source above going through here and the ground below the actual circuit element. Now this is not good, because this depends on the resistance between here, where the current will flow through the gate and charge here. So we need to have the source be completely grounded right here, and the drain go right here. So we kind of need to move around this MOSFET, where this drain connects straight through here, so this is uh, always positive right here. And we need to move this MOSFET so the drain of the MOSFET actually goes to here, and the source actually goes to ground. So that is how I will make the real circuit. These are the circuit components you're going to need. You're going to need this small ceramic capacitor, this large electrolytic capacitor, and you also need to have the LM7809, 7805 voltage regulator, the MOSFET, the NPN transistor, the ATtiny, the 8-pin dip socket that the ATtiny goes in, and then two 10k ohm resistors. Now I forgot that the ATtiny 5 volt signal needs to go through a 10k resistor before going into the NPN transistor. Now this part is the perf board. This is what we're going to mount all the circuit components onto. Everything is going to fit inside this black box and is going to connect to the lights and out using these two wires. Let's start soldering. Now, a lot of times I would tell you that you need to build your whole circuit on a breadboard before actually building it on a piece of perf board. But in this case, we're just going to start building the circuit on a piece of perf board. So right here, I already have the places marked out where positive and negative input will be, and output and negative output will be. Now, these will tell us how we need to set up our circuit. So we'll start by inputting the different parts, starting with the out and the MOSFET transistor. So what we'll do is we'll just insert the components in their respective parts and solder it together. So we're going to start by inserting the components. So the MOSFET will go right here, where the gate will be pointed up here, just towards the middle of the board. The drain is going to be just in the middle, pointed like that. And the source is going to be next to the negative output, because the current's going to flow from positive through negative and back to ground. After the MOSFET is in place, you can solder the source of it to ground of the output right here. Well, it looks like I done messed up here and used an LM7805 in place of the MOSFET. Well, that's going to be a lot of work to replace that, so let me get to work and replace all this stuff with the LM7805. Okay, now I have the circuit board all finished except for the AT Tiny. Now, I would have videoed all the soldering, except for my camera died. Now, what I've done here is I have finished adding all the circuit components in place. Right here, we have the voltage regulator. Right here, we have the MOSFET, the two 10K resistors, the little NPN transistor, the 8-pin dip socket, and the two capacitors. So that's how everything's in place, and this is how everything is connected to each other. Here we have both positive rails connected. Right here we have this wire, which is the negative part of the LED or whatever you're running. And that is going into the source of the MOSFET. And that source is being switched on by the MOSFET through the drain into ground. Now, this gate goes here to this is the transistor. And the gate goes through a 10K resistor to positive. The base goes through um, a resistor to pin 2 of the thing. Then the other, the collector of the transistor. So the collector of the transistor goes here through a resistor to positive and to the gate of the transistor. The emitter goes, of course, to ground. Then we have the AT tiny wired, so that way ground goes to ground, positive goes to the voltage regulator, which is right here, and to positive right here. And we have the capacitors wired up inside here. So that is the complete circuit explained and all finished. Now, if you're ever making a circuit like this that uses an AT tiny, which are kind of expensive, it's like $5, you always want to test each of the pins where your power supply is to make sure it's working. And so I can take my multimeter and connect it to the positive and ground pins of this AT tiny socket and hook it up to a power supply to confirm that it is indeed running at 5 volts. I also tested how well the transistor and MOSFET were working by plugging a little plug into positive of the 
AT Tiny, and then connecting it to this pin right here, which turns off the output. So that proves that the MOSFET transistor indeed works in its switching actions. So now it's time to insert it into the plastic project box. Now to insert the board in the project box, we're first going to have to drill a hole in each end. I can do this with my uh, step drill bit. So I'll just drill this little hole in the bottom. As you can see, this board is now inside here, and both wires are threaded through each of the holes to go to the respective positions on whatever it is being hooked onto. So now we need to program the AT Tiny with the code. Okay, so as you can see, this is the box all closed up. The lid fits just fine with the entire circuit board inside. And we have our two in and out wires coming out of each side. So now it's time to program the heart of this circuit, which is the AT Tiny. Now to program my AT Tiny, I'm going to be using this little board that I made right here, which is just a breadboard with an Arduino Nano and a bunch of wires on it. Now, I showed in a previous video how to build this whole thing and to burn the bootloaders onto the AT Tiny and set up the uh, Arduino Nano for programming. So if you want to uh, see that and see how to program this, check out my previous video. I'll put a link to the description. It's probably a year back. So I'm going to go to my computer. I'm going to type up a blink sketch. Now this blink sketch is going to be kind of exemplified because it is the certain pattern that he wants me to make this thing do. And so instead of just blinking it on and off, what we're going to do is we're going to have this AT Tiny blink at this other rate where it blinks on really quick, off slowly, just blinks at a bunch of different random patterns that make it look kind of cool. So first let's start with the simple blink sketch that's just going to make it blink on and off. So that way you can just prove that this device actually works. So I'll insert the AT Tiny into the programmer and make sure the dot is in the right position and then make sure everything is correct the com is right the at tiny is correct everything here is fine uh, then i'll click upload and see what it does okay as you can see it finished uploading the sketch to the at tiny so let's plug it into our circuit and see what it does okay now that everything is properly connected up on the inside the at tiny is plugged in we can connect the out wires to this small incandescent light bulb with some alligator clips and we can test to see how well this device actually works. As you can see, the new circuit board with the AT Tiny installed is working extremely well. With the Arduino blink sketch, with one second on and one second off, you can see that the incandescent light bulb is blinking on and off at one time every second, which means it's working. So now we can go into this AT Tiny and write a more advanced code that makes it do some cooler blink patterns to make it look better. As you can see, I now have the light performing some different kinds of blinks, where it goes really quick, really quick, and then to short blinks. So really, you can do whatever you want with the code on this AT Tiny to make whatever kind of display you want it to make. So there you go. That is how you make this little device that allows you to turn on and off a DC uh, source whatever you want. This AD Tiny can be programmed with whatever blinking patterns that you want for your LED light bar. Now of course when I was finished with my little box I had to add the Tanner Tech logo on the front with my soldering iron and on the bottom I used my soldering iron to write in and out so that way I know which wires are in and which wires are out. So my friend can hook up this box to his light bar and to his vehicle battery respectively and it will work correctly. Well that's it for this video that's how to make this cool little box thing that you can use to control different DC lights. And as you can see this box looks very professionally built there's just one wire going in one wire coming out it has my logo on the front. As always thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.